What's up guys, Austin here from Outrun the Sunlight. I was on stream about a week ago and a question came up about how Outrun the Sunlight runs our live show. This is a topic that when I was first starting out, I probably watched a countless amount of videos on how people set up, organize, and run their shows. And I think nowadays it's becoming much more of a popular thing to do, but I wanted to add to the knowledge pool of this is how we do it for our band. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how from start to finish, every time we play a show, how we set up our backing tracks, how we set up our click track, and how we set up all of the auxiliaries that we need to make sure that our show runs smoothly every time. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I work primarily in Logic and I'm Every time I do a new project, I have to make a new project. Okay, so blank canvas here. First thing I'm gonna do is save this. And I'm gonna save it on my desktop, on my drive, because I'm not gonna save it on an external because I wanna be able to reference it whenever I want to. And when we do our show off an external drive, it tends to run slower. I'm just calling it Outrun Live and then the date of the show. So 11 24 24. This is first show we're playing at Shuba's Tavern in Chicago. So save it, and then I wanted to save the audio files inside of it, so I don't know, it just keeps it easier, simpler that way. Our files exist in many different locations across different hard drives, just different places, and they tend to change and evolve as we play shows and you know change things about the song. So the first thing I had to do was with the guys, we had to decide on a set list. And I'm just gonna kind of like see if they fit in order. I don't really worry about transitions. I just wanna get the stems into these tracks. Yeah, so I have my set list for doing uh, one new song uh, and a bunch of songs we've been played in a really long time. So I'm gonna start by just doing some basic things that I know are gonna happen every time we play the show. So I know we're always gonna have a click track. That's usually the top thing. And then I always, I'm always like labeling stuff. Uh, second thing is we're gonna have cues. Cues are like my voice telling the band what to play. I'm gonna bust that, so that's Command Shift D on Logic and create a summing stack and call this click and cues. And I'm gonna route this down here my stereo out, I'm gonna send it to output three and four, which is what we've allocated on our X32. That's where the clicks and cues get sent, so it's separate from the backing track. The next thing I'm gonna do is do the band track. So that would be drums, Austin, me, oops, can't spell. We have Ken, we have Phil. Kyle, our synth player, gets his own special spot because he's gonna be in the backing tracks for the show. I always use the uh, SG for my guitar and I always use the, uh, the Sunburst Strat for Ken and then Phil just gets a little bass icon. I'm gonna bust this to a summing stack and then call this band. And so this is useful for when we forget parts in rehearsal, we can quickly recall what art is what you know, how the transitions happen, how the counting happens, and it just gives us like context to what we're doing really quickly. The next thing is I'm gonna do, we always have an aux guitar track. So this is guitars that are just in the backing track. They're mostly ambient guitars. 99% of them are ambient guitars. And then we have aux Kyle, which would be all of Kyle's stems. We have other auxiliary synths and then auxiliary impact, which is like 808 and auxiliary percussion which is like shakers and this and that. This is all goes to its own bus and we'll call this aux front of house. So this is what gets sent to the front of house and I label it with a speaker so that I know that it is gonna go there. That's sort of the general setup basically is what's gonna happen next. Is I'm gonna go through and drop all of the necessary information into each of these. I just wanna interrupt the video real quick and let you guys know that we started a Patreon. On our Patreon, we release new music, unreleased music, videos, tutorials, um, behind the scenes content that you can't find anywhere else. We see Patreon as a way to further connect with the people that like our music and also share knowledge about how the music industry works. Our band is full of professional musicians, not just in this band, but in others as well. If this is something that you guys feel you're interested in, it's like five bucks a month for the entry level and it gets you a lot of stuff. So hit the link below and we'll see you there. So the way I get tracks usually is from old project files that we've played live with. So I have those on hard drives. 
So I have like my master outrun hard drive right here. I'll go to the last set. I know that we played it. So the last time we played this was at arc tangent. And so I'm gonna open up the show file. But this is the show file from arc tangent a master file of everything that we did. I know that from this from this set list, we are playing Redbird, Remaining, and Animal. Luckily, those are the last three songs. I can actually just export them as they are. In this case, I'm just gonna go through and make sure I'm taking the proper track. So I'm gonna take all of Kyle. I'm gonna take the click track, the cues track, the cues record track, which is additional cues. I usually have two cue tracks because there's like, there's stuff that's been inlaid over time and then I always make a second one that if I like want to put a last minute cue into I can just record it quickly into that and then of course I'll take Austin Ken bass drums and then I will take the aux tracks and I'll make sure that I've got everything that I want and on Mac I'm going to hit command E and I'm going to export the cycle range only and in the stems folder this is where I'm just pulling from I'm just going to be animal redbird remaining normalize off and then I'll hit export and you'll watch this thing just skate through all of the backing tracks. Now it's just a matter of dragging the files over. So here we go. So Kyle comes in right here. Austin, we have bass, we have backing synths, we have the click, cues, record, drums, impact, Ken, transitions so that's usually another one too as i put in here is transitions um which are moments between songs so great so that plays that's what we want cool so now i have a few several more tracks to grab i also know that um this is going to get chopped off right here animals they're going to be the first track this is actually going to come over here so we're starting to get the order of everything Okay, so I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five songs I still need to get. So, geez, that's a lot of songs. I've gotten to this point where I have like my whole project laid out. The next step for me is to sort of level everything. And I do this mostly visually. It's just what's worked in the past. So I like, I know that this click track needs to come up. I'm basically trying to make everything almost as blocky as possible. Not because I want it to be loud, but because I want it to be the same. And then from there, I will adjust all aspects of the mix based on the faders. Now I'm going to color code these so that we so that all the stuff sticks together in the same group. Um, and I kind of just go down the rainbow. After this, I would start to make markers for everything. So I actually know which song is which make a marker, name it the name of the song and then cut it off and then basically rinse and repeat. And it helps me visualize like how much time is in between each song too. So I got a nice little break between Zero Dimension and Old Wound. Somewhat of a break between Old Wound and Spirit. There's sort of a sprint right here. I'm probably gonna end up increasing the space between Psychic Cycles and Heat Haze. And then um, into Redbird and remaining. So let me just make sure that these are labeled all correctly. And then basically as we rehearse, we discover new things about the tracks that are either wrong or need adjustment or we add cues or we adjust levels of stuff. And this is pretty much what we play to. The other thing I'll show you how I set up is our record. I'm actually going to import this one. I have all of my inputs that we would normally play with on their own track each with their own input. When I'm ready to go, I basically arm all of these and they're ready to record right along with us. We use 16 channels, kick, snare, tom one, tom two, tom three, 
hi-hat overhead left and right my guitar is in stereo ken's guitar is in stereo kyle is um in stereo but he's actually not being recorded for the show so i might do something else with that phil is mono our bass player and then the talk back mic which is what i use to talk to the audience too is also is a mono track i typically record um, additional room tone using like a, a zoom I think it's called an H1 it's like a little pocket like recorder that does uh, stereo recording um, that's pretty much the gist thanks for watching remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like what you see and join us on patreon for more behind the scenes content exclusive releases music things that are not found anywhere else I'm Austin thanks for watching see you next time